Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be, and welcome to a post about books. If you are a regular reader, you know that I am presently obsessed with figuring out how to quantitatively diagnose structural plagiarism. Verbatim plagiarism is easy to diagnose, but structural plagiarism requires a bit more computing power. I have an algorithm to analyze my books with respect to some books I think plagiarized the plot to a degree which is illegal, but I should now apply the same standard to some other popular books and see what comes out. Since most people know how Shades of Grey was inspired by Twilight, I'll apply my analysis to those books. The premise of both books is the same. Poor young woman gets swept up in a love affair with a rich older man who is has a dark side. In one case, he is a vampire who once enjoyed killing people, but now constrains himself to killing animals. In the other case, he is a businessman who enjoys beating and micromanaging the women he is using, but he takes good care of those from whom he feeds. I wish I had a copy of the books in front of me, but I don't, so I will sketch out the plot based on memories and online sources. Her mother, her parents are divorced. Her mother is, these are the overlaps between the books. Her mother is absorbed with her own romantic relationship. She has a friend that is nice and romantically interested in her, but he is of lower status. She bites her lip a lot. Her love interest saves her from being hit by a car. Her love interest is rich and collects cars. She drives an old beat-up car. Her love interest plays the piano. She has to go to an intimidating dinner with his family, but they turn out to be nice. The love interest takes her flying through the trees or in a helicopter. And this is all set against the backdrop of a standard romance plot structure. So, depending on how the points are divided up, I count between 10 and 14 points of overlap. Um, so, for example, he is rich isn't really unique enough to count as a plot point. It's more like he is rich and drives cars would be unique en or, and likes cars would be unique enough. And that would give you 10 plot points instead of 14. Um, in a previous post, I argued that when the sequences of the plot points are mostly the same in two novels, one can calculate the number of plot points factorial, so in this case, 10 factorial, and if it is larger than the 130 million books ever published, or the 5 million English novels ever published, then plagiarism has been committed because it's just not possible for, it's not probable for two, those combinations to spontaneously appear twice in a single instant in time. Um, in this way, you can have a quantitative metric to use in an automated system. To remind you of the scale of what factorial means, five factorial is 100, so combinations of five sequential plot elements will be in lots of books. If you divide 100 into, say, 5 million, you know, you'll have, um, <laughs> have a lot. And then um, 8 factorial is 40,000. For example, um, J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter used 8 plot points from Ender's Game and 8 plot points from the worst witch and then kind of splice them together to create something new and people we all agree that's okay because it made something different but the longer the sequence you take from another work the more people say hey you took too much so for example 14 factorial is 87 billion and that means it's very unlikely it's impossible that that plot sequence will spontaneously appear in two, twice within a very short amount of time. Um, 
and it also is related to the capacity of the human memory. You can work really hard to memorize 14 things in a sequence, but you don't just accidentally memorize 14 things in a sequence. You accidentally memorize five things in a sequence or even eight things in a sequence if you're smart. But even the smartest people don't tend to accidentally memorize sequences of 14. That's like a sonnet. You have to, even if you're smart, you have to work to memorize a sonnet. So if the overlap between shades of gray and twilight is only 10 plot points, the plagiarism is really in a gray area because 10 factorial is only 3 million, and that is comparable to the numbers of novels published in English since the beginning of time. One would expect such a sequence to appear more than once especially if the sequence is composed of common elements. But if the overlap is 14 points, then the plagiarism is cut and dried, because 14 factorial is far larger than the number of books ever published, and it is far larger than the capacity of the average person's working memory, or of a person's, any person's working memory. The trouble I see is that when the plot points are too common, as in her love interest is rich, the mode of analysis is it fails. You need the plot point to be unique enough, like her love interest is rich and collects cars or even a specific type of car. In the case of one of the books that I think plagiarized mine, I saw between 20 and 35 points of overlap in each book. And um, I don't want to read through it in detail, but I would refer you to the, the blog post linked below because I, I went through the books and I wrote down the page numbers on which the overlapping plot points occurred. And then that allowed me to plot those out and show how sequential they were. And when they're all in a line, you see that they are very sequential and that increases the probability that the person had the book sitting next to them while they were composing their work. So my understanding of copyright law is that if you just accidentally remember something and use it, that's great. I mean, that's inspiration. But if you have to have your source material sitting next to you and opening it and changing pages and you know seeing what happens next in the book to write your own book, that's not okay. I mean, that's plagiarism. That's what your teachers taught you in school, that if you have to use the source material to write your book report and you're copying things from it, you need to cite that source. You say, I, at the end in your references, you wrote, you write, you know, I use the encyclopedia to write this article, even if you don't cite passages that you've directly copied. You have, yeah. If I search really hard, um, maybe I could find an obscure Japanese manga that has some of the subsequences from my book that I've seen copied in this other author's work. But I think that does not change the overall analysis, just because maybe there are subsequences that are in the public domain even, how you combine those subsequences is unique to you. So one other thing is the perspective used. If you shift your, if you, if you take somebody's book and you just shift the perspective a little bit to write the book in the same world with the same story, but from a new perspective, is that okay? I don't think so. I think that's a derivative work because a lot of thought went into creating that memory palace or world. Um, I think it matters that Shades of Grey was attributing the influence of Twilight because Twilight was not impacted negatively by the production of Shades of Grey. But if an author is taking a story from someone who is no longer really in the public 
I, it's, they're stealing, even if that person wrote in the past and made, it, made a little bit of money from their book and then it just went out of fashion. That's sort of in the gray area. One must, of course, think of unintended consequences when trying to create quantitative standards. Publishing houses or Amazon could use an automated ruling system to go after a lot of people if they wanted to. But since Amazon doesn't lose any money when their self-publishers plagiarize, they don't have a big incentive right now to implement any kind of automated ruling system unless they become liable for damages to anyone who's had their book's plot stolen by someone who uses their self-publishing system. And this can go the other way, too, for the, the big publishing houses if they have authors who are stealing from self-publishing authors, which it's really quite a mess. So I suppose that draws this to a conclusion. There are still a lot of open questions and I will cover them in future posts. Thank you for watching.